Okay, what's going on, everybody? Back with you, John Stamper here, Dental Cast Productions, and back here in the trade show floor, and we have a very special guest with us, Mike Detola. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing great, John. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on here. I Absolutely. This. I uh, I know you've done so many amazing things in dentistry, and I know you had a course we were just talking about that you're here at the Hinman yeah. uh, just t uh, taught this morning. So I uh, wanted to hear more about that and how that was. Well, it's called a new um, technique for crown preparation, and it was kind of born out of necessity um, for myself. Um, when I was in dental school, yeah, I found myself in remedial operative, having to come on the weekends and actually do additional preps. And it was like the bottom, like nine students in the class that were coming on weekends. And I should have had a light bulb gone over my head, like, right. oh, this is going to be um, a struggle. And But I got through uh, dental school because you have so much time that right. you can really kind of make up for that stuff. And then right. I got out into kind of private practice. And, you know, in solo practice, you don't really know what what other dentists are doing and what their preps and impressions look like. Right. Um, it's one of the neat things about group practices now, I think, is for younger dentists to be able to hang out with other dentists in a practice and at least be able to see their preps and impressions and their endo and get some feedback on what they're doing. Sure. And then I started practicing inside of Glidewell Laboratories, and all of a sudden we had a huge broadcast quality TV uh, hanging over everything I was doing. We were filming it, and we were putting it up on two big 72-inch uh, monitors and that's like loops on steroids so all of a sudden right. I could see in in huge fashion um, how my preps and impressions needed needed some work I was hoping dental technicians that we always had dental technicians in the room watching me do dentistry because right. most technicians haven't seen dentistry done I was hoping they didn't know what a good prep was supposed to look like uh, they kind of did and uh, I remember the head of the Crown and Bridge Department saying, hey, the preps are going to have to get a lot better than that. And I was like, oh, boy, it, it's time to get better. So it kind of started me on this years-long um, search for how to get above-average results with a below-average left hand. Sure. And, um, and it led to kind of... Um, you know that paint by numbers for kids who aren't mm -hmm. real artists? Sure. Yep. This got yep. to prep by numbers. Right. Uh, the good news is it ends up getting you in the same place. And so today I can get above average results with a below average uh, left hand. And uh, that's what I was doing was sharing those yeah. uh, techniques and those those products with Dennis today because it's, it's good information for anybody who's not in maybe the top 10% of being gifted with their hands. And even for them, it might help them do something a little bit quicker than they were, were doing before. So having to overcome that for myself kind of became my mission to kind of want to share that story mm -hmm. and hopefully help uh, other people get better restorative results as well. Yeah, I I have to say, Michael, when we were talking about that and you were sharing, uh, you know, the vulnerability or coming right out and, and, and sharing that story, I, I can almost imagine a lot of the doctors in that class just kind of like being able to take a big sigh of relief, right? Okay, so this guy is going to really tell us what he's been through and, and how he learned and how he figured that out because I think a lot of times, right, you can go into some of these courses and you, you don't know what you're going to see or what you're going to hear. And I think to be able to obviously uh, hear someone share their real life story means a lot. And I would imagine gives a little bit more of a connection with the audience. Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, it used to be like I would say back in the 90s, it was kind of more of a rock star vibe right. to right. dental speaking. And so it kind of became everybody trying to outcompete each other with um, images and aspect ratio and how many screens they were using. And right. it felt a little intimidating to be in the audience, at least for me. Sure. And it kind of felt like I was looking at it going, oh, look at the things that this person can do that right. that I can't do. Right. And and so it was like, ooh, that's a little that's a, a little hard to, to swallow. So yeah, it was just me sharing that story. And it's interesting because I went to dental school with my cousin David, who does have amazing hands from mm -hmm. day one, from preclinical when we were carving central incisors out of wax blocks. He just got it, but he could never teach me how to do it. He was just right. born with this skill, right. but he could never teach me and, and still couldn't teach somebody how to do it um, because he can just sit down and do it. I mean, that's like yeah. a true yeah. artist, whereas I started like more of a technician and had to learn how to do it. And therefore, I think I'm able to teach it better because I had to work through all those frustrations Absolutely. and the shortcomings. And my parallel theory is that there's not a lot of great coaches 
who are amazing athletes. Like Magic Johnson right. tried it, Wayne Gretzky tried right. it, Michael Jordan tried it. The coaching didn't work out yeah. that well for them. But you look at the scrubs like Pat Riley yep. and Phil Jackson, yep. um, guys who you know really competed just to be on the mm -hmm. bench and maybe get a few minutes, yeah. seem to be the better ones because I think they've had to kind of plot that course for themselves yeah. and work through those frustrations sure. to get to that level of success. Absolutely, and, and, and I'm curious, some of the feedback you get from w when you speak about that, because I'm sure a lot of the doctors, like I said, appreciate that. Again, it's like this feeling of, you know, hey, I, I have someone that, you know, that's speaking my language or whatever the case may be. Uh, I'm sure it's very interesting what you hear from them after the course. Yeah, they'll come up and, and sometimes people will say, oh, I was in, um, I was in remedial operative too, uh, <laughs> or as well, not, not that there's two of them. <laughs> and uh, I'll go, oh, really? What? What about when I asked at the beginning of the course, who, who else was in <laughs> yes, remedial exactly. operative and you didn't raise your hand then? Yes. So I kind of get that, um, yeah, it's not probably the kind of thing that most clinicians sure. <laughs> would want to reveal in front of somebody, but it was just the truth. And um, I feel like now more than ever, now being 2019, that that authenticity mm -hmm. is is valued by yep. people, not just dentists, but, sir, but, but by all people. And so I think um, telling true stories does create connection yep. and I think telling a story where you're showing your spots or showing mm -hmm. a weakness or, or yep. a vulnerability creates way more connection than if I told a story where I was the sure. hero of it sure. because that's that's not what not what this is and so yeah I think people are willing to accept it and and start to I just had somebody today at the end of the lecture say can I send you a picture of some of my preps I'd like to get your feedback on yeah, it and so interesting. It, it is kind of cool when people do that I go yeah I'd love to look at that yeah. because it is kind of that thing where it's all of a sudden it's like okay there's not a level of intimidation there and we can yeah. we can talk about this and kind of be honest with each other about yeah. what's going on yeah so talking about that and let's let's move a little bit to continuing education and, and, and if that's where we're going which it seems like a lot of people are appreciating that and connecting more with that we know technology is changing continuing education but what are your thoughts on that like as, as we move forward uh, you know newer ways for people to learn and for, for the doctors to learn how to get better yeah I'm, I'm huge on clinical videos I mean I, I to me that is the way to get it done for a number of reasons I think there's an authenticity there because it's not being photoshopped like right. like in a magazine. You know, right. these still images shouldn't be photoshopped, but they could be, or even in advertisements, the way yeah. things look. And I think when you let it all hang out there on video, it it is more authentic and they're yeah. able to see and learn in a way that they can't necessarily learn from, from just still photographs. So right, I'm right. all about that. If you look at some of the videos that, um, that I did at, at Glidewell, if you go to like their YouTube channel, um, between the clinical videos we did and this show called uh, Chairside Live that we did yep. while we were there, there's 54,000 subscribers. <laughs> um, I don't I don't know if anybody else's YouTube channel in dentistry is anywhere near that. Yeah. But it's one of the things Jim Glidewell saw early on was the the potential to be able to do this. At the time, we were sending out um, 80,000 DVDs at a time. Back right. when you used to get AOL DVDs right. in the right. mail, like right. every week as well, and we were sending those out. And so streaming for us became a way to continue to put this out without having to spend all this money and postage on mailing the DVDs. And it just continued to grow and grow and grow. And uh, for me, it was so easy to record a case and then edit out the unimportant mm -hmm. things and leave it there and voice it over and try to keep it 18 to 20 minutes. And we began filming every case because if you just try to film specific ones, um, you'll never kind of get what you want. Right. It, and the ones you don't film turn out perfect. Right, <laughs> right. And, and so you need to film all of them because you don't sure. know where the little nuggets sure. are going to lay and then just voice it over and put it out there. I think the most viewed video on the Glidewell YouTube site is a, a Bruxer crown video we did where we replaced PFMs on tooth number eight and nine, teeth number eight and nine, and uh, it's up to like 2.9 million views. So that's... <laughs> It goes to show that um, if you put something out there that's interesting to watch and they're going to learn yeah. something, they will watch yeah. it. And so that's that is kind of competition for these meetings, like sure. the Hinman and things sure. like that. And younger dentists are really driven by. I'm so impressed by what the younger dentists are doing, getting involved with social media, yep. especially on Instagram. You yep. know, docs who are posting a lot of their cases and stuff like that. Um, you can learn a lot on that kind of streaming yep. stuff like you're yep. doing here yep. or videos that are out there on a YouTube channel. So I really think that's the future. Um, I think meetings like this would do well to steer more towards hands-on education mm -hmm. because a lecture, sitting in a lecture and watching it, 
to me is not that different from watching a video. Right. I mean, yeah, you don't get to ask two or three questions and have them answered, but it'll probably be answered in the comments. Right. Um, so to me, that kind of replicates what's happening here. But what you can't get in a lot of places uh, is hands-on education, sure. and, and that's a different level mm -hmm. of learning, whether or not it's yep. live patient or whatever. So. Um, anytime I'm asked by these meetings what they can do to get younger dentists involved, um, I'm always saying give them something that they can't get on their own on the internet on their own hours, and that would yeah. be hands-on, or make an event out of it like we used to do at Sorona, and yeah. hire train or Imagine Dragons or whoever yep. to come in and make it a true entertainment event along yeah. with an educational event. Absolutely, and I'm sure looking back, when you look back at those years when you were uh, trying to obviously uh, hone your skills and, and, and get you know become a better dentist, that having those videos, right? I mean, who knows? Being able to connect into some video of, of a doctor doing a case or what have you, you know, I mean, I, that stuff matters. And, and, and I think to your point, I think hearing the $2 million or the two, mil, the two million views on YouTube, that scale, like you said, is very powerful. Yeah, you know, there, yeah. could, there could be, a, you know, like you said, a doctor that could be struggling for whatever reason. And by just seeing the, the authenticity of what somebody's going through right. could make that connection, could really make a difference. And just from a, a company viewpoint, um, to me, that's the beauty of something like YouTube and how that platform has developed the way it is. I mean, I can, okay, so I can come here and lecture to 200 people. And so 200 people hear this prep technique that I have. Yep. Um, that prep technique video is online and it's been viewed by, you know, over a million people. That's a right. significant amount of people who are now, it's not like a Glidewell promotional piece. There's sure. really nothing about sure. Glidewell in it, except yeah. Glidewell made the crown that's there. The crown looks good. Yes. So I guess there's a soft association where people yep. might say, oh, I like I like Glidewell because of this educational stuff or that crown looks good. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give them a try, but it's a much more effective way to communicate with the masses yeah. than it is to fly to Atlanta from California yep. and speak to 200 people. And I'm not even sure how much more effective speaking to them in person is, right. because a couple right. people did ask questions today during it and then afterwards. Uh, but essentially, had you filmed it and they watched it, sure. they probably would have gotten as much out of it. And they probably would have paused and rewinded it a couple times where right. people said, wait, what was that? What was the number on that? Right, right. And so you could even argue that streaming that might be a more yeah. effective way. So I don't think that it's still kind of about the show and about live live lectures, but I'd like to see a higher percentage of hands-on live patient demonstrations as well. Um, and then I'd like to see some entertainment kind of, you know, yeah. brought into it too, because I think we showed at Serona that will yeah. draw people, it draws attention thousands and, yeah. of people to a meeting because now it's this really cool kind of combo yeah. event. People say, well, the ADA looks down on having education and entertainment together. And it's like, okay, sure. I, mean, I, I don't know what. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's interesting. Um, I'm glad you brought up the whole thing with the companies because I, I have always been a believer that that the companies have a lot to educate on. And, and I've had conversations with dentists and dental boards and, and, and the like or what have you. And, you know, Michael, it's interesting. If, if a patient complains about something that happened with a material that was used, a lot of times what happens? You could go back to, to that office and say, hey, did you get training from that company on that material? And so, I mean, I've always believed that the, the companies can do so much in the, in the way of educating. And I think, like you said, it can get lost because I think a lot of people think, well, we're going to cross the lines with selling. But at the end of the day, if it actually trains that dentist how to use that product or that material, it makes a big difference. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. And, um, you know, for so long in dentistry, it's, all, it's been um, manufacturers complaining that doctors don't read the IFUs. You sure. Know, they, they never take out the right. instructions and read right. them. And the instructions are on a little accordion white piece of paper in 67 languages. <laughs> and so you unfold this wafer thin paper you know, that will tear at the slightest provocation. Right. It's like printed on Kleenex and you're looking for the ones in English and reading it. And it's like, well, what if there was a three minute clinical video mm -hmm. that was narrated by somebody yep. with a yep. soothing, pleasing voice like myself? Yep. And what if it was narrated by me and it was showing it actually being used? So instead of looking at little illustrations of a brush on a tooth, I think they'd be much more likely to actually right. watch it. It'd be really easy just to have them view this web, ad web address on your website and have mm -hmm. a, a, a product being used, not an animation or an illustration, right. but it actually being used in the mouth. And I really think Dennis would watch that because yeah. they're much more likely to do that than unfold that white piece of paper and sure. just searching for, for facts inside of it. Absolutely. That. And from a continuing education standpoint, I'm curious, you know, for, from your perspective as a clinician, it's 
that is education, right? I mean, if, if you're learning that and that's helping you get better, helping you learn about a lot of those products and, and materials and things like that, it is going to help you advance in your career and serve more patients, hopefully. It is education. I don't know that the ADA SERP sure. uh, people would sure. see this education sure. because it's on a, um, a single product, but, um, but it, it, it really kind of doesn't matter. Like, for the longest time, there was no CE tests on a lot of those videos that we were putting out at Glidewell right, and right. people still viewed them. Right. So yes, doctors want CE. They probably would prefer to get CE when they view something like that. And now yep. there are CD, CE tests for all that stuff. But they even like when I used to do this thing called the case of the week where I just walk onto the lab floor, grab another dentist case, totally anonymous, and then share it with them. And they love seeing other dentist dentistry. Yeah. They love being a peeping Tom yeah. and being able to see like another dentist dentistry right. um, who didn't know it was gonna be viewed and they get to see the prep and the impression. And we would talk about what the doctor did right, what they could have done better, yeah. and what we're gonna do at a lab to try to help the dentist get a better result. Yeah. Those were six to eight minutes long. And again, you know, tens of thousands of people were watching those and it was so short that there wasn't any CE. But if it's interesting to watch and yeah. they learn at least one thing, um, they'll be down for watching it. And so, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a big supporter of that. That yeah. I, I think the more we do in terms of video, the more willing dentists are gonna be to educate themselves sure. instead of reading um, directions to actually watch a, a video that comes with it. Uh, I just got a new car. I'm surprised there was still an owner's manual in it. Um, yes. There was one and yes. I was kind of glad right. because that, that's the kind of thing to me that's much easier to flip through to see how to program the adaptive cruise control right, right. than it would be to do it as a PDF. So there are still times yep. where I like printed things better, yep. but using products, learning how to use products clinically is not one of those things. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the future. A couple things you're excited about as you look out next couple years of dentistry, just some things that really have you excited moving forward. Um, I love the idea that um, I've been working with Aegis mm -hmm. um, to produce a, they're kind of calling it the Netflix of dentistry, mm -hmm. Aegis TV is mm -hmm. kind of uh, the code name for this, this project. And what we want to do is create this platform where we have all these different channels, a restorative mm -hmm. channel, mm -hmm. an endodontic channel, a perio channel, an implant channel. And within these channels, there will be different shows and we'll pick different KOLs uh, who are good on camera and are good at documenting their cases yep. and know other KOLs who they can interview and start to put shows together where you'll actually be able to kind of binge watch it much like you would yeah. be able to binge watch a show yeah. and see this programming on there. You know, Aegis owns three magazines. They own right. Compendium, a long-standing great yep, absolutely. magazine for, for uh, prosthodontists and specialists, but GPs mm -hmm. as well, Inside Dentistry and Inside Dental Technology, which is a great magazine that bridges the world between dentists and laboratory technicians, a world that I'm is near and dear to my heart. Yeah. And um, they just see that, um, you know, that the ad sales, not just in their magazines, but all yeah. of them are, are getting thinner and the magazines sure. are getting a little thinner. So it's getting tougher to sell that. Kind of like it's getting tougher to get younger dentists to come sure. here. So with the rise of video and streaming, it's, it's becoming clear, maybe not to the manufacturers just yet, mm -hmm. but that a better way to talk to a dentist about your product. Might not be the full one page ad, right. but might be a five to seven minute video where we talk to a dentist who's been using this product mm -hmm. for months or years, yep. having success with it, and they share a couple cases with us showing it how it works for them. Yes. Um, that to me is the exciting thing how um, advertising and dentistry is hopefully gonna move more towards mm -hmm what I'll call reality-based, for sure. lack of a better term. Yep. Um, because that's education too. Now there's not CE, it's only one product. It's being paid for by the company. Yep. So, yep. Uh, but I, that doesn't make it wor worthless. You know, just right. because right. Just because I'll pick a, a company, Ivaclar, for example, mm -hmm. is paying for um, us to produce a five to seven minute video speaking to one of their KOLs about Emacs, Zercat yep. Prime or something like that. Yep. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily full of lies or anything. We're not talking to an Ivoclar employee, we're talking to right. somebody, a recognized mm -hmm. opinion leader in dentistry who uses this product. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think we're gonna continue to see dentists moving towards mobile devices and viewing products like that. There's still a place for magazines. Yep. Um, I, I love taking them on airplanes. For me, they're site specific. Sure. So when I'm on airplanes, I sure. love to be able to do that because streaming Wi-Fi is not great yep. on planes yet. And I still like be able to see what everybody's doing, but I see much more of an impact in the future with that kind of education, kind of like what you're doing here, something yeah. that didn't exist you know, yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because when you talk about the situation with Ivaclar, it's like, uh, if if I could learn a little bit about that product, you know, and, and watch that, 
Uh, and, and, and so often I think the negative spin gets talked about on how a product is presented. How about the positive aspect where you hear somebody that says, man, I wish I would have known about that six months ago. Right. Like, you know, that doesn't get advertised a lot. Where so often I think we discover a lot of these products and we're they're thinking to ourselves, man, when I had this case or this case, would have been great to know that that was out there, to your point. Right. So I've always been a proponent of those companies wanting to get that out there for the, as long as they do it in a positive way, like you said. And like we were talking about, the video piece forces you to be good. You were talking about that as a dentist, right? right? It's there with all this newer technology, the more exposed it is and the more you see that, it forces you to get better quicker. Right. And I think it's the same thing for companies. I think that once that technology is there, like you said, and they embrace it, they get down that path and they realize that, hey, we are going to be out there for everybody. It's transparent. We better make sure that our message is good and right, to right. your point, you know? Yeah, and I just think that, that dentists are, you know, you can look at a one page ad in a magazine and maybe read, you know, a little about the product, but just being able to interact on a, on a different basis yeah. with it and see it on your own time, on your own way. Um, as long as you've got somebody who's a credible voice, both the KOL and maybe the interviewer who knows about the product talking about yeah. it, um, I think it's fantastic. So yeah. tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing with um, with Dentalcast. Yeah, so what we're excited about, this all started, uh, I started a podcast about a year and a half ago called The Digital Trade Show. Mm -hmm. Whole concept was what you talked about, which is, you know, I spent time uh, selling products to, to, de to dental practices, and then I had some time working as a coach and consultant, and I was on the other side of the counter. And what I saw was the challenge with a lot of the companies wanted to get time with the dentist, right. but then a lot of times the companies didn't realize that the teams really do want to learn about the products. Right. They're just busy working with patients. So I wanted to start this podcast and start to bring companies on and have them tell a little bit more about their story, kind of like why. You know, you, you said you might see a one-page ad, but to have the company come on and actually tell a little bit more about their story, make that connection better. Uh, so that started, that podcast started another one called Digital Classroom, interviewing CE speakers and educators. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of evolved now into being at these meetings. Right. Uh, we've, we've been fortunate to, to come to some of these meetings and interview uh, people like yourself and the companies and the speakers and 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 showcase to maybe the people that can't come like you said some of the the younger dentists that hey you know maybe next year I do want to come for a live event or I want to be there for a couple days or two right. uh, we want to utilize this technology to share with them that there's a lot of good stuff that can still be learned right. and leverage that and get them excited about it so it's been a lot of fun and uh, we're having a blast well, I think you're doing the right thing um, there's a lot of younger dentists now who are just crushing it like on Instagram they've got these yeah. amazing accounts sharing cases tons of followers they're doing live stuff like you are putting it yeah. up there sharing a case and it's a really neat way to be able to interact with people I still like having the YouTube videos that kind of live forever yeah absolutely and can be viewed but I also feel like you know I'm 54 years old I feel like I'm kind of the Mason Dixon line almost right around my <laughs> age where dentists older than me probably aren't messing with Instagram too much and looking right. at it but dentists who younger definitely are and it's crazy to me that when you look at any dental magazine they still have those cards on yes. the inside. You know yes. which cards I'm talking yes. about? Where it's numbered one to a hundred. Yes. And so you'll look at a full page ad for a certain product. It'll say, you know, circle number uh, 82 <laughs> on the response card. And I'll, I, I've asked, I've looked at it at, at Aegis and talked to other people and they still get a bunch of those turned in. I, I just refuse to believe that there's anybody under the age of 40 right. who is circling. How little do you have to care about a product that you see an ad for and you go, you know what? I'd like to learn more about this in two and a half weeks. So I'm gonna circle this number, send it in, wait for them to send it to the company, wait for the company to send it to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm insulted that you right. wouldn't just look at it and go, right. oh, let me check that out and put it in your phone or your laptop yeah. and Google the company or the product and take a look at it. But there's still a lot of dentists filling these out. And they sure. said some of them just circle all of the numbers. Right. So now everything, every company in there is going to be sending you literature. But what an awful way to learn about things. Right. Just go just go to the website, right. their website, right. and right. look at the product. And hopefully there's a clinical right. video or some sort of video demonstrating its use. So I feel like what you're doing and what I'm trying to talk about with these digital things is really is looking with an eye towards those dentists and the ones who are retiring now, um, I, I think they're they're going to stay, you know, circling the numbers on their cards and sending that in to get really slow information uh, on a product. But um, I feel like my age is kind of the, yeah. the dividing line between. Yeah, that. that's I don't interesting. Know if, I don't know if that's true or not, yeah. but it seems like uh, you, you know what like would be fun would be do actually do a live stream of at their office sitting and waiting for their literature that they've circled on the that calendar card. where the pages fly <laughs> off and then you see kinda the leaves like the, fall the, off the, the leg trees. lamp right from a Christmas story where like he was like what's in that 
big box. I'm so excited to get the lake lamp. But no, I'm with you. And and, and I think on the other side, what, what what I do see times is that you know you travel. I know you travel a lot. You do you go to the airport and. There is no shortage of, you know, older individuals on their phones, right? right? So it's, it's it's interesting to me because you right. may there's a lot of noise out there that well they're not they they're not involved in social media and, and I don't I mean it, it's out there right. you know there, more and more of them are seeing that so to your point uh, I think they do want to get educated in that way it's just it takes a little time it takes a little time old people on iPads cracks me up yeah. I mean it's really funny it's like uh, it's like seeing really old people eating pizza. It's like right, just right. a weird look. It's like a young man's food. It's like, oh, that that looks weird that those 80-year-olds are having pizza. You know, it's right, not right. what you, you right. know, it's not, it'd be like seeing them playing Dance Dance Revolution or something <laughs> like that. But so I I think the, the older dentists might be leaning that way. But I think a great way to get them to do it would be How's this for a concept? Um, you have the Hinman Dental meeting. You can come and get the continuing education that you want in person. But if you register for it, you can also get 10 more hours of CE mm -hmm. on this video yep. that's behind a you know firewall, lock, yeah, firewall yep. on yep. the Hinman website, and you can get you know you could probably sell it to companies and have yep. them be part of that feature yep. thing. So now all of a sudden you're getting a bonus 10 hours for yep. coming to CE. And we know that you, you've sold burrs to dentists for a yeah. lot of years. You know yep. dentists tend to be a little on the cheap side. Yep, yep. Especially when it comes yep. to uh, high-end reusable yes. burrs. They're yes. looking for single-use right. reusable burrs. Right, right, right. Um, so I think things, kind of innovative things like that would help as well and get them to start viewing yeah. things. Yep like that where they could watch it on demand whenever they want and still yep. get CE credit for it. I'm waiting for kind of the first major dental meeting to develop yeah. a program like that. Well, and I have to say, I mean, it was, you know, Lacey and I were so excited that, you know, started with Chicago, Dr. Boris, and then now the, you know, the Hinman team right. and their willingness to want to bring this in. You right. know, I mean, I think to your point, I think that, you know, they're, they're, they're seeing the value of this, which I think says a lot about them and, and where this is going. So I'm encouraged about it. I have to ask before we wrap, so uh, of some of the performers that were at uh, Zero World and any anyone that you got to meet in person and were was different than maybe what you'd have thought of when they were on stage well Richard Branson was certainly different yeah. um, I expected uh, Donald Trump with a British accent uh, you just expect like this uh, guy who circumnavigated the world twice yeah. Yeah. in a balloon and, and done all this crazy stuff and just you always hear these kind of swashbuckling stories I expected this big, kind of oversized personality, yeah. kind of like what we saw with um, Tony Robbins, yeah. like at Sarek yeah. 30. Yeah. Um, he is that guy, and there is that energy. And um, I met Richard Branson about 25 minutes before we did that interview. Um, he wanted some tea, and so we met for tea in the green room, and uh, he was really quiet. Yeah. And I. I wasn't sure what was happening, and he stayed quiet for the 25 minutes, and we went on the stage, and uh, I realized, oh, I'm, I'm going to be the energy in this conversation, yeah. um, which I did, which would be the opposite if you're interviewing Tony Robbins. Right. Because then it's just annoying. Right. Yes. Somebody has to sit back and just turn him on and put a quarter in <laughs> and let him go. Um, so that, that was surprising to yeah. me. Um, yeah. I got to meet uh, Steve Martin at um, Sarek 27 and a half, mm -hmm. which was a, a, a huge... Yeah. Thrill. That was yeah. amazing. And, um, you know, and Train, a band who I had a passing interest in, but yeah. not really. Um, we hired them and, and they just crushed it. You know, yeah. they, they, it was a really great job, an example of kind of mm -hmm. professionalism, of knowing the room, knowing where they were and knowing how to get dentists and dental staff mm -hmm. involved with it and mm -hmm. taking selfies during the show and just cool. oh this is what professionals look like put on a show and speaking of that tony robbins um he had uh three people with him backstage and one of them had already put together um what he wanted to talk about so the stories that he wanted to mm -hmm. talk about that he mm -hmm. said he wanted to talk about um, and then somebody else was listening to him as he was talking, and in the confidence monitors down at the base of the stage, when they would think of another story, because they've seen him speak so much, that might relate to what he's saying, they would put it up on the screen, <laughs> and then somebody else was running down everything he actually said, because he always goes back and looks at what he did. So there's this team of three people in real time 
kind of knowing that, oh, he tells a story about his dad, and wow. they put that up there, and he can decide or not decide yeah. to kind of tell that story, and then they just keep putting things up there, kind of helping him do that. He's already come up with the game plan, and then somebody's recording everything he actually says in case he happens to improv something or right. impromptu say something that should be incorporated later because it got a good response. And I'm like, oh, this is what it takes to be the best motivational oh speaker God. in the world. There's a whole team of moving oh, parts. Man. There's one guy, one huge guy on yeah. stage doing it, but there's three people backstage helping this run in real yeah. time with an earpiece and confidence monitor. Wow. So yeah. I was like, oh, this is really, it was a great glimpse That's behind the curtain awesome. of how that works. That's pretty awesome. Well, I mean, in that context, I got to say, I've got, you know, my team here from Steady Ready, Chris Carson and Jordan, a photographer, and we got Grant and, and it is, it's, it's really cool to 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 be doing the streaming on the mic but you you know you you don't always realize the work that goes on behind the scenes right. you know what i mean and so i love that story that's great i didn't know that about tony that's awesome yeah i, I don't look at it like uh or a real man would do it oh no that. totally like, yeah, i mean exactly. it's yeah of course i mean it's like i mean like you said i mean i think about the the energy and and all the that all goes into what he does i mean it's it's and a the massive music cues and the lights oh yeah like down to the nth degree it was um it, it was cool. It was theater, and yeah. it, it was it was an awesome show. And he's the only guy I've ever seen get sixty five year old male Dennis standing up, holding <laughs> hands with each other, jumping up and down. When he asked him to do this, I was standing backstage. I'm like, oh, this is not going to happen. And then all of a sudden, I'm watching, and all the you know people from Sirona, Germany, were there jumping up and down and doing these dance things. I was like, that is insane that he can get Dennis, some of the you know most shy people sure. you will ever, and introverted people doing this kind of stuff and it was it was really inspirational to go oh you can get people to do just about anything you want them to do if you've asked them in the right way yeah no question michael this has been great yeah, this is a you. true Appreciate pleasure man i lo love talking to you and 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 get your insight certainly on so many different things and i uh, really appreciate you coming on the podcast my pleasure thanks all right. let's do it again all right thanks again